Roger, copy mission. We live in an age of astonishing advances. Sending at about 0.75 meters per second. Engineers can land a car-sized rover on Mars. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Physicists probe the essence of all matter while we communicate wirelessly on a vast worldwide network. But underlying all of these modern wonders is something deep and mysteriously powerful. It's been called the language of the universe and perhaps it's civilization's greatest achievement. Its name, mathematics. But where does math come from? And why, in science, does it work so well? Albert Einstein wondered, how is it possible that mathematics does so well in explaining the universe as we see it? Is mathematics even human? There doesn't really seem to be an upper limit to the numerical abilities of animals. And is it the key to the cosmos? Our physical world doesn't just have some mathematical properties, but it has only mathematical properties. The Great Math Mystery, next on NOVA. Major funding for NOVA is provided by the following. Human beings have always looked at nature and searched for patterns. Eons ago, we gazed at the stars and discovered patterns we call constellations, even coming to believe they might control our destiny. We watched the days turn to night and back to day, and seasons as they come and go, and called that pattern time. We see symmetrical patterns in the human body and the tiger's stripes and build those patterns into what we create from art to our cities. But what do patterns tell us? Why should the spiral shape of the Nautilus shell be so similar to the spiral of a galaxy? or the spiral found in a sliced open head of cabbage. When scientists seek to understand the patterns of our world, they often turn to a powerful tool, mathematics. They quantify their observations and use mathematical techniques to examine them, hoping to discover the underlying causes of nature's rhythms and regularities. And it's worked revealing the secrets behind the elliptical orbits of the planets to the electromagnetic waves that connect our cell phones. Mathematics has even guided the way, leading us right down to the subatomic building blocks of matter. Which raises the question, why does it work at all? Is there an inherent mathematical nature to reality? Or is mathematics all in our heads? Mario Livio is an astrophysicist who wrestles with these questions. He's fascinated by the deep and often mysterious connection between mathematics and the world. If you look at nature, there are numbers all around us. You know, look at flowers, for example. So there are many flowers that have three petals like this, or five like this. Uh, some of them may have 34 uh, or 55. These numbers occur very often. These may sound like random numbers, but they're all part of what is known as the Fibonacci sequence, a series of numbers developed by a 13th century mathematician. You start with the numbers one, and one, and from that point on, you keep adding up the last two numbers. So one plus one is two, now one plus two is three, two plus three is five, 
three plus five is eight. And you keep going like this, five plus eight. Today, hundreds of years later, this seemingly arbitrary progression of numbers fascinates many who see in it clues to everything from human beauty to the stock market. While most of those claims remain unproven, it is curious how evolution seems to favor these numbers. And as it turns out, I mean, this sequence appears quite frequently in nature. Fibonacci numbers show up in petal counts, especially of daisies. But that's just a start. Statistically, the Fibonacci numbers do appear a lot in botany. For instance, if you look at the bottom of a pine cone, you will see often spirals in their scales. You end up counting those spirals. You will usually find a Fibonacci number, and then you will count the spirals going in the other direction, and you will find an adjacent Fibonacci number. The same is true of the seeds on a sunflower head. Two sets of spirals. And if you count the spirals in each direction, both are Fibonacci numbers. While there are some theories explaining the Fibonacci botany connection, it still raises some intriguing questions. So do plants know math? The short answer to that is no. They don't need to know math. In a very simple geometric way, they set up a little machine that creates the Fibonacci sequence in many cases. The mysterious connections between the physical world and mathematics run deep. We all know the number pi from geometry, the ratio between the circumference of a circle and its diameter, and that its decimal digits go on forever without a repeating pattern. As of 2013, it had been calculated out to 12.1 trillion digits. But somehow, pi is a whole lot more. Pi appears in a whole host of other phenomena, which have, at least on the face of it, nothing to do with circles or anything. In particular, it appears in probability theory quite a bit. Suppose I take this needle, so that the length of the needle is equal to the distance between two lines on this piece of paper. And suppose I drop this needle now on the paper. Sometimes when you drop the needle, it will cut a line. And sometimes it drops between the lines. It turns out the probability that the needle lands so it cuts a line is exactly 2 over pi, or about 64%. Now, what that means is that, in principle, I could drop this needle millions of times. I could count the times when it crosses a line and when it doesn't cross a line. And I could actually even calculate pi, even though there are no circles here, no diameters of a circle, nothing like that. It's really amazing. Since pi relates a round object, a circle, with a straight one, its diameter, it can show up in the strangest of places. Some see it in the meandering path of rivers, a river's actual length as it winds its way from its source to its mouth, compared to the direct distance, on average seems to be about pi. Models for just about anything involving waves will have pi in them like those for light and sound. Pi tells us which colors should appear in a rainbow and how middle C should sound on a piano. Pi shows up in apples, in the way cells grow into spherical shapes, or in the brightness of a supernova. One writer has suggested it's like seeing Pi on a series of mountain peaks poking out of a fog-shrouded valley. We know there is a way they're all connected, but it's not always obvious how. Pi is but one example of a vast interconnected web of mathematics that seems to reveal an often hidden and deep order to our world. Physicist Max Tegmark from MIT thinks he knows why. 
he sees similarities between our world and that of a computer game. If I were a character in a computer game that were so advanced that I were actually conscious and I started exploring my video game world, it would actually feel to me like it was made of real solid objects, made of physical stuff. Yet, if I started studying as the curious physicist that I am, the properties of this stuff, the equations by which things move, and the equations that, that give the, the stuff its properties, I would discover eventually that all these properties were, were mathematical. The mathematical properties that the programmer had actually put into the software that describes everything. The laws of physics in a game, like how an object floats, bounces, or crashes, are only mathematical rules created by a programmer. Ultimately, the entire universe of a computer game is just numbers and equations. That's exactly what I perceive in this reality, too, as a physicist, that the closer I look at things that seem non-mathematical, like my arm here in my hand, the more mathematical it turns out to be. Could it be that our world also, then, is, is really just as mathematical as the computer game reality? To Max, the software world of a game isn't that different from the physical world we live in. He thinks that mathematics works so well to describe reality because ultimately, mathematics is all that it is. There's nothing else. Many of my physics colleagues will say that mathematics describes our physical reality, at least in some approximate sense. I go further and, and argue that it actually is our physical reality. Because I'm arguing that our physical world doesn't just have some mathematical properties, but it has only mathematical properties. Our physical reality is a bit like a digital photograph, according to Max. The photo looks like the pond, but as we move in closer and closer, we can see it is really a field of pixels, each represented by three numbers that specify the amount of red, green, and blue. While the universe is vast in its size and complexity, requiring an unbelievably large collection of numbers to describe it, Max sees its underlying mathematical structure